so um today i am going to be doing something a little bit different just because um i just want to put on some makeup and i also want to talk about the selena series so we're on selena part one episodes five and episode six we are getting there so i'm just gonna do my makeup so i'm just gonna get ready for no reason because <laughs> i don't go anywhere to pick up my daughter from school or like a target pickup that's it and starbucks which I already went to. So, um, this is what they got this morning, <laughs> but, um, yeah, you guys going to get ready with me for no reason. And we're going to talk Selena, the series period point blank. That's what we're doing today. I use my JLo that star filter complexion booster. Gave me a little bit of a highlight. Gave me a little bit of something. Some, I am trying this out. I don't have any thoughts on it yet. Okay. And then I prepped my face with my Huda beauty matte you know, I love it. I use it all the time, tried and true. And then also Painterly Paint Pot, which is by MAC, and that's for my eye base. I'm going to use the Morphe MUA and Manny palette, the Glam palette. Never used it. Did swatch it, though. This reminded me of the palette that Manny did with um, Makeup Geek. I will post a picture of it right here in this little area. And if you guys cannot tell, it's very similar. This shade was what called me to it. I was like, are you kidding me? This shade too. So I think I never used it because I just feel like that was like a cheap shot when I'm not going to lie. Like I love Morphe. Like I do. Um, I buy their stuff all the time. So I just wanted to hop on here really quick. I'm about to film another video, but I wanted to show you guys what I found and it's the Makeup Geek and Manny palette. I forgot I did keep this. So this is the inside, and I know I posted a picture, but I also wanted to show you guys the resemblance of both. And you guys can tell they are very similar. Look at the bottom row, or look at this row right here on top, and then this row right here. Um, but very similar setup and layout. This one just has additional colors and two highlights. But I just wanted to show you guys, I know my lighting's a little off right now, but I just wanted to show you guys the resemblance of each one. And I'm going to swatch the two green colors. This one's Aries. And then this one is Insomnia. And the difference in pigment and or like the texture is insane. But spot the fuck on. Okay. So this one was Makeup Geek, and this one is Morphe. There's no originality here. Um, I tried to feel that there was originality, but there isn't. Um, I'll go in with Howl and Aphrodite. Okay. Morphe, Makeup Geek. Makeup Geek Morphe. I mean, it's insane to me that these are damn near the same palette. Quality of Makeup Geek is by far better than Morphe. Um, but clearly Morphe is doing just fine with the quality that they have. Um, clearly, they're still I still enjoy some of their products, not all of them, but I do. I feel very sad that these palettes are the same. Honestly, I ride with Marlena. I fuck with Marlena and I just like this. I don't think I've used it because of that. So um, this is going to be my first time using it. It is swatched. You can tell. You can see the swatching. It was not used other than that. If you want to get ready with me, talk about Selena. Talk about the tea with this Manny MUA palette that's been out for like fucking six years. Let's, let's do that. Okay. This is episode five of Selena. It's called Dulce Amor, which is sweet love. And it is actually the name of her 1988 album. So basically it starts off at 1989 that Suzette is driving stick with Ricky Vela and Selena in the car. The CBS deal is still like in play. Like they're still talking about it. Like Ricky is very kind to Suzette. She is, he is very, um, just sweet to her. Like what he says to her. Um, just how he is, his, his gestures, his, he's, his soft voice. It's very, he's very, very kind to her. And you can tell, like, in my opinion, I feel like there was something there. There was some kind of connection or crush that he had on Suzette. 
and I don't think she noticed it to be honest with you um but this was never like brought up in like the Selena movie or anything like baby that baby is prepping for his baby with Vanjie and she's due in like four months. She like told him like, I'm not going to be sitting at home waiting for you. I want to go on the road with you. And AB's like, hmm, what do you mean? Like, what do you, like, how are we going to do that? How are we going to maneuver that? So eventually, like when they're on the bus, Selena questions the CBS deal. CBS deal is the one like with the big company. And Dania says, it's good. Good money, not a good deal. Suzette also, like what you notice with her, it seems like she's trying to get into like the business as in like to figure out financial shit. Like financially, like is the money good? Like how much is it? I think she said something like, oh, is it like sports car or is it like minivan money? Like or something like that, like the comparison of money. So she is really like trying to get into like understanding like what is up, you know, and like what the money is because you have to split it amongst them. It's not just like, oh, it's all Selena's. No, no, like it's everybody gets it. Everybody gets a piece and that's how it goes. Selena was outside. They were about to go on the road again and she's looking, flipping through like a magazine. It comes up where she wants to be a designer and she wants to, you know, make her own clothes or like design clothes that are um, in a good price range for her fan base or just for people in general because she feels like people are getting ripped off with the money. And when you look inside the bus, um, Big Bertha, there's still like no interior, no bunk beds, like how they show in the movie, in the Selena movie, you don't have like the bunk beds. Later in the Selena series, you'll see that they actually have bunk beds, there isn't any at this point. So then they're also waiting on Roger outside and they're like, what the F is going on? Like he's late. You can tell that Mr. Quintanilla is very annoyed because he does have a work ethic, you know, and he wants to be on time. He doesn't want to be late for gigs and stuff like that. His reason that he was late was he said it was because of his baby. Um, if you know that he, you know, the kid was sick and stuff like that, like when he was leaving. And then also then you can see like they cut scene to um, Abe, AB and you can see he's like looks concerned because that's his future. Like this is like his world is flashing before him. Like what happens if his baby's sick? You know? Lena is in a white outfit. You can see it. It's at the TMAs. This is where Jose Bejar comes in, okay? He um he watches her. She has great like presence. She has she's a great singer. She has like an it factor, you know, that a lot of people don't possess, but she's a superstar. That's what he feels. And it seems like they're scouting, in my opinion, like for new kind of regional Mexican music groups. To sign. She ends up winning two TMA awards and then also at this point EMI started their new land division which they're scouting for. So that's what you end up finding out. That's what he's doing. That's where that's why he's there. That's why he's looking at all the talent at the TMA awards. Mr. Quintanilla wants to meet Jose Bejar and he just started. He asked some like kind of like questions and kind of like interviews him on what he's doing with his life. How long he's been with EMI blah blah blah. And basically he says, well, he just started at EMI and he started the Latin division. And then he kind of lies and says he, they're very close to signing a deal. And obviously this is just like um, a technique that he's just saying because he wants to see like where this will go. Behar uses this analogy that kind of caught Mr. Quintanilla's eye. And it made him really think and consider because he brings up about a baseball like collection like a baseball card collection and he basically said like do you like cbs has a bunch of cards cbs has a bunch of like people on their record label and a bunch of you know different kinds of acts regional mexican acts they have a ton of people in the same division and he's saying like do you want to be part of the collection and just hope that you just like pop and you you know you make it big or do you want someone who really works for you and where you call the shots and you say I want to do this 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 then they go to Poteet Texas and she starts saying always mine which is one of my favorite songs okay and she's wearing like a red outfit and this outfit she wore on the 1988 Johnny Canales show so you guys can go check that out and I'll leave a picture also right here for you this is where it was from and I love it it's so cute they did a really good job with her outfits I have to say I have to give credit where credit's due. You can't just be like, 
total hater about it. Like the shit looks good. Okay. After that show in Poteet, um, Roger ends up quitting. So bam, no guitarist, right? Explains like his family, he needs his family and that, you know, that he's always away from his family, but like AB shouldn't worry about it because he's with his family. He travels with his family. So, I mean, I see like totally where he came from and why he is feeling that way. Does that comes in with these like shirts, right? And she's like, oh my God, Selena, check this out. Like, look at this. Like, look at these shirts and then merch. This is where merch happens. You know what I mean? Like she sees that people are making these shirts. Abe tells them that, you know, they're not making the CBS deal. After he spoke with Jose Bejar, he was like, mm -mm, I don't want to do this deal. Like he agrees. Like he feels like they're not going to give that much attention to them. They just want them just in case, bam, they pop and, you know, they, they become something. Then the next scene, you guys see Selena graduating high school. So then AB ends up questioning the EMI deal and a, like Mr. Quintanilla just says, hey, I'm just fixing the language. Like, we'll figure it out. Whatever. Kind of leaves it at that. And he does bring up that, you know, that they want to change, like, the name from Selena Los Dinos to just Selena. And um, I think that kind of hit home and, like, where they kind of felt disconnected from the group, um, like A.B. and Suzette. Which is so understandable. He explains why they would just do Selena. Like Gloria Estevan, they wouldn't be like Gloria Estevan and blah, blah, blah. He gives all these different ones, you know? Like if it was just Selena, it would be easier. You know, Whitney, you know, Cher. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? And um, so they end up signing with EMI. And explains that they are dropping the name, but they are not dropping the band. So Selena and Suzanne are going car shopping. Mr. Quintanilla reminisces with Marcella and she ends up giving him like a prep talk about, you know, trusting. Like, have you ever not trusted someone or have you ever been wrong about trusting someone? He said no. And then they just end up, you know, dancing. And I really like these parts of them to me. It makes them like, like it humanizes them. It makes them more like kind of personable you know what I mean so I like these moments in the show and you know, some people probably like this is cheesy like these old people but honestly I think it really humanizes them and makes them like relatable in a sense you know so then Van uh Vanjie goes on the road with them at seven months pregnant so she only has like two more months left until she gives birth to their baby and um joe and pete end up joining the band so this is really big for um selena los dinos because if you guys know like pete has been with them for a very long time along with joe who joe's like a great pianist kind of i don't know the word for him but you guys know you see him on the keyist keyboardist oh, whatever you guys know so um yeah so he ends up joining the group and suzette was kind of like taken back from it and so was Ricky. It was weird, but maybe he was just feeding off of, you know, Suzette. Obviously, we're missing now a guitarist. Somehow he knows Chris, and somehow, you know, he finds him. Um, and he she, he knows that he's with the uh, Shelly Lares. So he goes to a bar, visits him, and just talks to him. Since Roger left there, they need to fill a spot. He does say no at first because, you know, she lost a lot of people and she's stressed out. And he's, he's seen, they show him to be a very kind person where he's like, I don't want to, you know, leave her and like leave her in like basically in a mess when I leave because people were quitting left and right on her, you know, stuff like that. This has to be around like 89, 90. Okay. Which it's unclear, but I'm assuming it will see them at the, at Rosedale. So, Rosedale's where they're performing, obviously, and, you know, tells him to envision being with them, you know, whatever. And if he doesn't see it, then that's okay, and he understands. And then Suzette questions Mr. Quintanilla why they joined the band. So, this is interesting to me, because I didn't, I never really saw this side of Suzette, and I know it's never been, like, out on, like, display. Mr. Quintanilla basically says, like, it's to help Selena, so she doesn't get super tired or press her voice out even more because she is like the one that sings she's the one that her her instrument is her voice so he just like is trying to say like you know 
is to help Selena. So can we do that? You know, Suzette ultimately says like, you know, she would, she remembers like back in the day, not back in the day, but just like before when it, things were talked about and things were, you know, brought up for discussion and not just, you know, he decided on how things were. You know what I mean? So I think she was just kind of feeling like left out and like not understanding this and that or like why some decisions were being made or things like that and why some decisions weren't. So she just feels like the family is not as close as they used to be. Vanjie gives birth. Uh, Suzette gets her license and then Chris comes to see them perform and she's in this black outfit. And that's pretty much the end of episode five. So now we're going into episode six, which is My Love. And My Love is a song of Selena. And so it begins where A.B. doesn't, um, you know, isn't changing the baby. Kind of like, um, I, I think he just has, he says he has like some type of like, you know, he's grossed out with germs and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, what are you going to do? You know, if you have a baby, you guys, you get it. We all know, okay? Like, it's nasty. In my opinion, Vanjie seems like like the equilibrium to him. Where she's like, oh, honey. Like, she'll make little jokes. Like, oh, I'll tell her to do better. Even though she's, like, two months old. You know? So I just feel like, to me, like, Vanjie is his little equilibrium. Where she can, like, kind of make him feel better. And still puts him in his place. But still, you know, tells him, you know, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. Or, you know, give, give some advice and stuff like that. So I think... I like them together. So then um, Selena is writing a song in bed, which is My Love, which is the episode's name. And um, which honestly is one of my, I always say this, but I, literally, I love some of her, I love some of her like older English songs. I know a lot of people don't know them. Like everybody knows like Dreaming of You and If I Fall in Love, but she had some good ones, guys. Okay. Like her, some of her old music, like super old like 89 90 were good okay like i'm not saying like i'm into every single one like that would be a lie but i like a lot of it i really do jose bejara kind of breaks the news saying oh like just so you know like ab is not going to be the producer of her album exactly what he didn't want to hear and it kind of broke the family like apart because selena is used to working with with AB obviously like that's her brother and she's used to his work ethic his work style you know everything it goes from from A to Z that's you know that's her comfortable spot and it's a collaboration then he ends up saying I'm gonna collaborate with this new guy and you AB so and Timmy Jose Behar seems genuine if you see you no know, old YouTube videos of you know like her getting the plaques and stuff he just seems super nice and super kind and honestly i've i've always felt like he had her best interest at heart and then how they portrayed him in here it just confirms that for me they end up talking about sukiyaki in Spain. then they're gonna record besitos which oh i love this song okay and she's um in a rush to go to the fabric store and because it was closing then ab ends up getting frustrated because he just feels like she's not giving like 110 percent you know it feels like she's not taking it seriously for him and he's doing it because he's scared that he will get re um, replaced you know by another producer obviously like a more established producer for her album like he does not want that then she ends up saying like making it like a funny like thing like okay oh let's just do it really fast you know, the Besito song. And so he's like, what? Like, what do you mean? And then she starts singing it. He's like, okay, let's give that a try. So we called in Ricky and was like, hey, let's try this. And they end up trying it. He just feels like, I just feel like AB is under a ton of pressure a lot of the time. Like, it's not just in this instance at this point. Like, I just feel like a lot of the time he is always like in some, like under some type of pressure. And it makes me feel really bad for him. And honestly, I'm glad that they finally show this. And I might get a little bit of, like, flack from this, from saying this, but I just feel like, like, A.B., like, doesn't get the, like, as much credit as he deserves. Um, I've seen, like, a bunch of, like, little outlets that are, like, oh, like, he's not the only one that wrote the songs. I understand he did not. He was not the one that wrote everything all the time or, you know, arranged the music, but he had a lot to do with it, especially early and in, in this time. So we got to give credit where credit's due. 
is all I'm saying. She brings her clothes like Jose said for her to do. And they like just don't like her clothes. Like don't like her style at all for this album. They're like, oh, pick something from our stuff. And blah, blah, blah. And she's like, he told me to bring my own stuff. I know what I like. <laughs> That thinks that they look stupid it just i feel like it was just such like a terrible like negative album cover like i just feel like it wasn't her and even if you go look back on the album which i'll put right here so you guys can check out the album cover it's not our selena first of all i did an amazing job recreating it but second of all it's just like not our girl <laughs> they're unsure of like what the concept is so I think that's where like they weren't communicating the way they should have. Don't feel happy. She doesn't feel happy and doesn't feel like herself. Like, you know, like I said, Mr. Cadenia is like kind of annoyed by it because he's like, what the heck? Like, this is not like I thought people were we were going to be happy. I thought we were going to be able to kind of like do what we needed to do. He goes and argues and states his problem. And he just basically says, like, I want to reshoot this. Like, I just feel like this isn't what. Like, it was made out to be. I think he feels like he was lied to. Which, if you guys know how Mr. Quintanilla is, or at least you, at least I think I know how he is. He's like, he doesn't want to feel the way that he's feeling right now. He doesn't want to feel like he's been lied to or like, like you made me send a seal and you're not going to like hold up your end of the bargain. Behar doesn't, says he doesn't want them to be like labeled difficult. That's what he brings up. And I think that hit home to him because... You know, you don't want to be like a newer artist and be like, oh, well, these, these two, these guys, Selena and Los Dinos, oh, you don't want to work with them. You know, like he definitely doesn't want that, especially because they are still very, you know, new into the scene of not music, but being under a label. So, and I think that they're used to just kind of doing whatever they wanted. He basically tells them like, do you have numbers? Are you like a multi-platinum selling artist? But he basically said like, you know what? I'll let you reshoot. I don't care, but I'm going to let you know that it's going to push the release date, push everything back. So it was something that he had to think about and he was like, no, like, forget it. Like, we'll just, we'll deal with it. And Marcella visits AB and AB is a very hard on himself. And he's like, I could tell he's like a perfectionist. Tells him it's important, important for him to be with his family. You know, like don't miss these moments, something to walk, learn to talk, just growing. Like you don't want to miss that basically important for him to be with his family so he goes home and apologizes like for him being absent and stuff which I think is very kind of him and I get it like and I think she gets it too or else she wouldn't have been with him I, I don't think for as long as she was if you know she didn't really believe in his music or believe in believe him that he was sorry you know for being absent and she just she always makes light of the situation it's just she always kind of makes it funny and stuff like that so uh or like kind of like brings them um, like it's funny. you know like she kind of has her little sarcasm her her little humor so i i really like her and then they give the backstory of like sukiyaki that it's like for a failed protest and riot you guys just kind of gotta uh watch that episode it's basically about like failed protests and riots so then um she's at her listening party or her release party then a girl stops her and tells her her jacket's so effing cute and she's like thank you and asks what department she works in she goes oh like the singing one like they didn't i don't think they thought that it was her and then also it confirms also that it doesn't look Mr. like then he says ab needs to get a guitarist asap you know like it's this is the time like let's go move your butt we need a, we need a guitarist like we went without we need a new one Rosie Cadenia says she wants more say in the next record and stuff like that you know regarding like how it looks and how it's presented and stuff like that so which I, to me is understood because also that's his daughter and also like he knew she wasn't happy so what are you gonna do you know that she needs to practice the words because you can always tell when she doesn't know the words. she always put the mic too close to her mouth and then she does ask about Selena asks about the record sales and he says that they're fine doorbell rings the irony was that ab says no distractions and then chris walks in the door like he tells her to stop getting distracted and just like practice and stuff but the irony was uh the ringing of the doorbell also they play i could fall in love which come on what they did with there and it just wasn't like a vibe for me at all i don't know why i just feel like it was too cliche you know too cliche and that's pretty much the end of episode six so, those are the two episodes and I just want to know your guys' opinion and stuff like that. I'm just going to finish up my makeup here and we're just going to see 
um, how this makeup turns out. I am going to do like kind of like a nudier lip as I always do. <laughs> Seriously, I do though. I really need to start like branching out more. So now I'm just kind of going in with these, just some of these matte colors and just putting that like halfway through on my lower lash line and then adding in just a pop of the pink. Uh, it's called Gementa, I think, or Gementa, or Gement, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It looks like magenta, but it's not. It's just like the end of magenta, Gementa, whatever. Then we're going to actually go in with the highlighters that are in this palette. So we're going to just try them both, and I'm going to put them both on. Um, actually, I'm just going to use a fan brush, and we're just going to try with Nova here, which is kind of like more my jam. It's kind of lighter. And do not forget that I did put um, highlight underneath my um, my foundation as well and on top. So this isn't going to give the full effect. This is just kind of like setting it. I'm going to use my normal brush, which is the M510. And let's just kind of dig in there. I mean, there's a little bit of kick up, but I mean, oh yeah. Okay, now we can see it. Okay. It's all right. It's a nice, decent highlighter. I don't hate it at all. Um, and then put that here and here, and we're going to also put in the gold color and just kind of set all this. I know I'm putting like a ton of highlighter on, but what are you going to do? It's my provocative. So I have my mascara on, you know, you guys see, and then we're going to go in with Entre Mi Mundo, and this is just going to be our lip liner, and it's from the Selena MAC collection that launched couple years ago maybe and we're gonna go with la reina which is an amplified cream lipstick which is just a nude brown and i'm just gonna put this right over and you guys know i'm like, like totally into lipstick but we're doing it for our girl okay we're gonna put on selena vive which is more of like a pink nude just right here in the center and I love these colors because I feel like they were very her. And then we're going to just top it with um, Hey Dad Pizza, which you guys know is I've used this a couple times. I'm just going to lay that right in the middle. And that's pretty much it for that. And then I'm just going to put on some spray on the face. And then we're good to go. And just a really quick v review on this palette. It's not necessary, in my opinion, if it's not available. Um... I wouldn't grab it. I mean, honestly, you can find better palettes and even better Morphe palettes. Um, I think it's nice that they put like, you know, did the highlight and everything like that, but not necessary. Um, everything had the mattes were good. I just weren't a fan of those two shimmers, but you know, to each their own. And if you just want to support me, anything, go grab it. That's why I did it, but it is what it is. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed my review of the Selena series part one, episodes five and episode six. Oh, I love doing these because I can talk about her and just say my opinions on it and stuff like that. So if you guys want to um, talk some more about it, we can totally do that. And just head over to my Instagram and uh, don't forget to check that out and follow me there. And um, I will be coming out with the next um, seven and eight and then we have one more and then we gotta wait. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the makeup tutorial, the Get Ready With Me, as well as the Selena series um, update and everything else. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I will talk to you guys soon. And don't forget to subscribe before you go. And um, check out the beat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys so soon. Stay happy, healthy. Wash your hands. Love you guys.